AngularJS is a structural framework for creating dynamic web apps. If that's confusing, don't worry. Basically, it means we can extend HTML syntax to express an application's components more fully. To start, we'll open Sublime here and create an index.html file, and then we'll also create a JS file, and this will again hold all of our JavaScript. There we go. Now we'll just add some boilerplate to our index.html, and then inside of here, we'll import the Angular framework, and we'll do it just like we did for Bootstrap and jQuery, and for this tutorial, we're using Angular 1, and so copying that, we'll paste it in here, and we'll say script source equals, there we go, close that script tag, save it up, and now we have Angular. In this tutorial, we'll be creating a to-do list application, and so we're going to need to create another file, and we're going to call it app.js, and this is going to go inside of our JS folder. And so in here, we're going to initialize our app, our to-do list application. And so we'll go var app equals angular.module, and then to-do list, which is going to be the name of our module, our app. And we're not going to have any dependencies, and so we'll have this array that is empty, and then save that up. And now our to-do list app is initialized. However, our index.html doesn't know about it. So we need to go in here and add a little link to our app.js file. Here we are, and there we go. Although our app is imported, there's still more to do, no pun intended. We need to connect our to-do list module to our HTML code. To do this, we'll write ng-app equals to-do list, and this will be an attribute of the body. This states that everything in the body will be a part of the to-do list application. Furthermore, this attribute is called an Angular attribute because it is part of Angular and not just plain HTML. Next, we'll create our controller, which will handle the data for our application. And so we'll create a new file here, and we'll call it maincontroller.js. And we're going to put it inside of our JS folder, but also inside of another folder that we're going to create called controllers. And so we'll save that, and this is where our controller code will go. To create a controller, we can go app.controller main controller, which is just the name of our controller, and then add the scope here, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, and then a function that takes the scope. And then open, close, curly brackets, and now we have our controller. Just like most of our files, we'll save this and import it into our to-do list application. And so it might be odd that we're adding this at the end or towards the end of the body, but this is just convention in how it will work with most Angular applications. And so we'll have JS slash controllers slash main controller .js. Close that tag. And we'll add some comments in here so that it makes a little bit more sense. And now, going back to our main controller, we can talk a bit more about the scope. And so for now, we can think of the scope object as something everything in our program can talk to. The view, aka our index.html, can see what's in scope, and our controller can set the data that's inside the scope. This is how the two files, you know, the HTML and this controller, communicate, and how they can pass information to and from each other through this scope object. Thinking in this way, we'll write some to-do list items and put them in the scope of our controller. And so we'll write scope.list equals, we'll have this array, we'll say one item is clean my room, we'll say another is go to the store, and the last is study cracking. And now we have our three to-dos. Here, we added a list attribute to the scope and set the value of this attribute to an array containing clean my room, go to the store, and study cracking the coding interview. Now, how does our view, aka, you know, our index.html, know about this controller? Sure, the file is imported, but there's one other thing we have to do. So saving this and going back, we need to attach it to an element in the HTML code. We'll attach it by creating a div, you know, just a simple div here, and then we'll access its ng controller attribute and give it the value main controller. Now that we're inside of the div that has its scope data controlled by our main controller, we can access the values of the list attribute. And so we can create a list tag right here. And we're going to do some weird stuff, but I promise it will make sense in a second. And so this is accessing the first to-do item, and then we'll create another list item accessing the second, and because counting starts at zero, that's why this looks a little odd. 
And then our last list item. These curly braces here are called handlebars and they note that the items are coming from the scope object. That's the thing that we set inside of our controller. Without these, our list items would have the literal text, you know, list, square bracket, zero, square bracket, and you know, the same thing for list one, instead of our actual to-do items, clean your room, etc. Refreshing the page, we can actually see the items in our list. And so I'm gonna drag this over here. And we have some problems here, and so we'll go ahead and debug and inspect the page, you know, go to our console using our developer tools, and we have a problem in our main controller. And so it's on that line. We'll go ahead over here. Oh, there's a dot instead of a comma. There we go, we'll fix that, refresh the page, and there we go. So sometimes it's just a little syntax error that can really mess up your code, so be sure to watch out for that. However, going back to our code, this seems a little bit inefficient and it only works if we have exactly three items in our list. Instead, we can use an Angular directive called ng-repeat to iterate through the items in the list. And so we'll go ahead and comment that out. And we'll learn a little bit about directives later, but for now, just think of them as a tool that helps make our code more modular and concise. We'll create another div here and add ng-repeat as an attribute. And so we'll go ng-repeat, and we're gonna say item in list, close that div, and inside this div, we'll go list item, and inside this list item, we'll say item. Here, we name each thing in the list an item, and for each item, we put it in a list tag. Again, we are accessing the list attribute of the scope object, which was set here in the controller. The list attribute has the value of an array that has our to-dos inside of it. We can use this ng-repeat directive to go through the items and put each in their own li tag. One last thing before we go, we can also add an input field here so that we can add items to our to-do list from just the web page. And so we'll go input ng-model equals add to do. This creates an input field, an ng model, another Angular directive, binds the input to the variable add to do. This add to do is an attribute of the controller scope object, and it can be accessed again in the index.html file and in the main controller. We'll also create a button here so that when it's pressed, the item is added to the list. When we click the button, the add item function will be run, but this function doesn't exactly exist yet. Going back to our main controller.js, we'll add some more code. And so adding onto this, we'll go scope.addItem equals function, open close parentheses, open close curly bracket, scope.list.push, scope.addToDo. Here, we add a new attribute to our scope, addItem, and give it the value of a function. Inside the function, we access our list and push on the addToDo variable, which has the value of the input field from our index.html. Now, if we refresh our web page and try to add a to-do, say, read a book, the to-do is added. However, when we refresh the page, our added data will disappear because we haven't saved it anywhere. Something to think about. In next week's video, we'll talk more about AngularJS and go into directives, services, routing, and accessing an endpoint from your code. See you next Friday.